Hello everyone, my name is Hemingway Jones and welcome to the channel. This is a place where we talk about fountain pens, inks, journals and journaling, and anything to do with writing. Welcome to my library where I'd like to talk to you today about a very special pen and all the sort of associations that go along with it. We all talk about luxury and we talk about value and I think a lot of these concepts come up when discussing this very interesting pen. Since you've already seen it in the title of the video, I won't carry on for much longer. So what we're talking about today is the Cartier Diablo, a great fountain pen. Let's get some of the particulars about the pen out of the way. So this is the version that is made of Chinese lacquer in this gorgeous red sort of burgundy color. And the lacquer is painted on in multiple layers to give it tremendous depth. And it has this incredible finish. Even after 15 years of fairly regular use, this pen is holding up quite well. It's an amazing pen. So it's also trimmed in yellow gold. It has the Cartier written across the edge of the cap rather nicely. It has a ruby cabochon, which is deep and interesting looking. It's one of my favorite features of this pen. And the most important part is that it has an 18 karat, very decorative nib that is somewhat soft. So it's not a flex nib, it doesn't have line variation, but it does yield a bit to the regular pressure of your writing. And it's also a fairly wet nib, which I personally like. I bought it as a medium and it truly does write like a bold. In fact, I know I have the box somewhere, I've been searching for it, I just wanna double check that it isn't a bold because it truly writes like one. Nevertheless, it is an amazing pen to use. It glides, it always works each time you uncap it. And that may be because it is quite sealed. When this pen is screwed on, you almost feel like it's some kind of a nautical joint, like you could throw it into the ocean, retrieve it after a year, and no salt water would get inside. It's quite a nice feeling when you unscrew this pen. Now, it is a rather heavy pen. I believe it has a brass base, so it's hefty. You could defend yourself with this pen if the situation arose, but it's no less a joy to write with. It's still quite balanced. The grip feels very nice in your hand. It has a nice piece of metal to stop your finger from sliding onto that 18 karat gold white nib. The white nib is interestingly in juxtaposition to all the yellow gold that's on this pen. It's an interesting choice, but um, I quite like it. I like how it draws your eye to the nib while you write, and you can watch yourself form these exquisite letters with this fantastic fountain pen. So it is very nice, very luxurious, ergo the name. We are dealing with Cartier here. Now, how much of this pen is the name and how much is the performance of the pen? This is a concept I wrestle with quite a bit. You're gonna hear me talking about this quite a bit because the original retail price for this was around $1,000. So are you getting a $1,000 pen or are you getting a $400 pen with $600 of brand markup? Now, I do have a theory about this pen, and I have a theory about every pen. Some of them are expensive, but they are what they are. 
They are an individual unique occurrence of that pen. So it's the price of entry to have it. And speaking about something like a Mont Blanc 149, what, it, what is the retail now? $925, $950? That's what it costs. If you want to write with it, you can either spend that, get it new from a boutique or a reputable online store, or buy it used for, what, $600 now? It's not too bad that you could use one for 20 years and it still retains 66% of its value. So, you take something like this, a $1,000 Cartier pen. You are getting the Cartier name. It has that exclusivity to it, if you care about those kind of things. I am not so much interested in the brand Cartier for how exclusive it is or how it may make somebody feel that I'm interesting or cool because I own something that says Cartier on it. I'm too old to worry about those kind of things. For me, it's all about the artistry. And this pen has that. I actually have an interesting theory about this pen. I and mean, I could be completely wrong. And I've mentioned this before in some videos. So I think this pen may have been private label made by Mont Blanc. Simply because the nib and the feeder just look suspiciously like a Mont Blanc. And the writing experience is also very, very similar. It's more smooth than texture. You're not getting a lot of that like Sailor Pen or Pilot Custom 823 so, sort of reading each ridge in a piece of paper. This glides over it on a blissful layer of thick ink you're just sliding across the page on it. And if you like that kind of experience as much as I do, this is one of the best pens for it. Now, while I was talking before about how much is for Cartier and how much is for the pen, if this is indeed made by Mont Blanc or someone else and then decorated by Cartier, and I have nothing to back that up. I mean, it could be just that Cartier coincidentally looks quite a bit like Mont Blanc, how it makes its pens. This is a converter fill. So that's sort of where it's letting you down a little bit. Now it is a very nice converter and it works fantastic. And it fills the pen with, you know, a decent amount of ink efficiently, which is nice, but it's not piston filled as you would expect at that price point were it Mont Blanc. Now the decorative parts of this pen are exquisite. The gold is done well. The ruby cabochon is dazzling. The nib is incredibly beautiful and decorative. Each part of this pen is fantastic. So there's a certain feeling when you write with this pen. It is definitely aristocratic. You almost feel like you have a palazzo in Venice and you have your regular house along the Champs-Élysées in Paris. Maybe you're a CEO of one of the luxury brands in France or something. That's the feeling you get. Beside all those associations though, it is just a joy to write with. It's one of my smoothest pens. It's quite heavy and it feels solid in my hand, but I love it and I use it quite a bit. Now, you're not really supposed to post it because it can scratch it, but my pens are mine and I don't worry about those kind of things. I'm going to use this and I'm going to leave it for the next generation with some bumps, scratches, and everything else that's going to tell my story of using it. So if you want to acquire one of these now, you have to look on sites like Peyton Street Pens or eBay or go to one of the pen shows. They're a little hard to get a hold of. I see the black ones out there much more than I see the red Chinese lacquer ones. Personally, I wouldn't mind finding another one. So if you see one, give me the link in the comments. I'd appreciate it. I wouldn't mind having a backup. So here's an interesting story about how I acquired my Cartier Diablo fountain pen. So this was back in 2005, six or seven, somewhere around there. And the Levenger store at the Prudential Center in Boston decided they were getting rid of any fountain pen that wasn't Levenger's brand. 
so I went in there that day and I got the Schaefer, I got this Cartier, and I think I got some other things, and they were 80% off. So this $1,000 pen or so was around $200. And at the time, I wasn't even that enamored with it. I just thought that if I ever wanted to own it, that was my best chance at a great price. So I bought it and I have it all these years later and I was able to use it and enjoy it and not really worry too much about it because I got it at such a great price. It is a very fun pen and an interesting pen to journal with and to chronicle my life with. So tell me, what do you think about the Cartier Diabolo? Is this a fountain pen you'd like to add to your collection? What do you think of luxury pens in general? Is it ever worth it to pay $1,000 for a pen? Let me know in the comments. Well, thanks for reaching the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment, and share it with someone you like. If you didn't, then leave me a comment and tell me what I'm doing wrong. I'd certainly like to reach more people here on YouTube, so if you can help me at all to grow my channel, I'd appreciate it very much. So I'm looking forward to seeing you again next time when we talk about another pen or journal or something to do with journaling that will keep you inspired and writing. Take care.